Hey guys, it's me and as promised I told you guys I would talk to you guys all about my running and how I got back into it and my tips and advice on running. So I started running consistently about a year ago. I've picked up running numerous times throughout my lifetime after every kid was born, when I felt like I needed a new year's resolution and I never stuck with it. Either I would get pregnant or I'd get lazy or get cold outside or I'd get busy. I don't know, I just wouldn't, wouldn't stick with it. I didn't start actually sticking with it until last year uh, but at that point I was pretty much in shape. I was kickboxing. I was going to the gym regularly. I was doing yoga. I and mean, I'm actually very just athletic in general, so I should probably mention that before I go any further. I played soccer for 11 to 12 years competitively. I played softball in my past. I ran track and field. You know, I've, I've done a lot of stuff as a teenager and as a child, so I was already kind of used to you know, running, not running, running long distance, but just being active and running. But I was never a long distance runner. I never liked running long distance. I wasn't built for that, I don't think. So when I started running this last time around, reasons why I did it was because I wanted something that was easy for me to just be able to do at any point of the day. I could just go out my front door and do it instead of travel somewhere to a gym and get all dressed up and go to a locker and do all of that kind of stuff. I also wanted something that was fairly inexpensive because our family's on kind of a budget. So I didn't want to have to spend a bunch of money every month on a gym that I possibly Possibly wouldn't go to and I also really wanted something that would help me with my weight loss my energy and just feeling good about myself in general um, there's something about running and accomplishing a goal like a race or a distance or just getting off my butt and getting outside that really makes me feel good after I'm done and so running was something that fit all those bills it also is great resistance training which I need because I am prone to osteoporosis because I'm on the smaller side and I don't take in as much calcium as I should so because it is good resistance training it helps with bone density and all of that Things that help me run, there's a lot of things. Um, my tips for running, it depends on the type of person you are. For me, the reasons why I did not like running was A, the long distance part. I would get so bored running. Like I would get really bored running, so I would just stop. So to solve that problem, I have started to run on busier streets. I've noticed when I run on busier streets, I'm not as bored. You know, I see cars and people passing, and I see interactions happening on the street, I see people going in and out of stores. There's always something to be looking at instead of concentrating on the fact that I'm running and I'm getting tired and or I'm hot. You know, I don't like running inside my neighborhood just because it's just like house after house after house. Oh, look, there's a tree, house, house. You know, so if I go on a more, you know, publicly and more trafficked area, it's nice because I do have stuff to kind of keep me interested while I'm running. Another thing I really like to do is listen to music, which really helps. So I listen to, you know, really upbeat, exciting music. I really like hardcore rap for some reason, but it pumps me up so much and the beat really helps me with my running that I stop concentrating on the fact again that I'm running. You know, I'm listening to really good music and watching people interact. So that gets me through my longer distances of running. Another thing that I hated about long distance running was getting tired. I would always get tired. But you know what? The whole point of running is to get tired. It is to work out. It is to do those things. So for me that was all mental. Like the rest of the stuff that I hated about running was mental. There was my self-consciousness about just being out running in general and people looking at me. You know, that was something I had to get over. I had to realize like who cares what people think. I'm actually getting out and being active and doing something good for myself. So that's all that matters. And then there was the breathing. I would constantly, constantly, constantly just get out of breath by running. But you know what solves that? Continuing to run. Yeah, building your endurance, building your lung capacity, that kind of thing. Another thing is learning how to breathe correctly when you run. It took me probably six months to finally get into a really comfortable breathing uh, technique, but I actually used to be a mouth breather. I still am when I sleep, but I've learned to actually breathe through my nose now when I run, which has helped immensely, and I've learned how to slow down my breathing. Before I would start off running and and I realized I was going too fast, and that's why I would start hyperventilating and getting so tired and out of breath so soon. I've started to not care about the speed that I'm going, instead just how far I'm going, which has helped. So I go at a very slow speed. You know, I've done races with people where they're just like off. They do better when they go, go, and go and go. But then they pitter out. I am slow and steady runs the way race. I go slow, and then I get to a comfortable speed where my breathing and my feet are matching up, and then I stick to that. And then at the end, when I'm a half mile out, I sprint. So those were the things that I hated about running, was the getting bored, being self-conscious about the people around me or people looking at me or that kind of thing, and then also my pace 
um, you know, learning my pace and my breathing. So once I got over all those hurdles, like running just became more enjoyable and it became a lot easier. So I know that's easier said than done, but I think those are the things that, at least for people like me, that are the hardest hurdles to get over. Going back to the breathing and the getting to the long distance stuff, Another thing is that you need to start small. Like I kind of expected myself to be able to run a mile to two miles just off the bat and that's not how it works, especially if you haven't been running. Um, you need to start off slow. But yeah, so those are the things that I really hated about running and it just took time and figuring out what kind of music I like to listen to, where one running was easier for me and you know how to breathe and how to pace myself. The pacing yourself I think is really super important. Again, I when I run with people, I, I used to feel like I should have to keep up with them, but now I realize I can run at my own pace and what's comfortable because I'm different than the next person. Uh, when we did the 8K, I ran with two of my friends and they just sped off immediately and I was constantly behind them the entire race until one of them got a cramp and then I was able to keep my pace and then even speed up the last half mile and finish at a really good time and I was really comfortable. So that's another thing, is just kind of not psyching yourself out most of it again comes back to being self-conscious, but just not psyching yourself out. Just, you know, going at your speed. But all the things that kind of were standing in my way when I started running, I think that and then also the motivation part was really hard. You know, it's easy to really get really excited about something new and stick with it for a little bit, but it's really hard sticking to it when you get really tired or really busy, especially if you're a mom or a dad or, you know, you work a lot or anything like that. The things that have kept me motivated are A, the fact that I've seen a huge difference in my body in general like I've lost a lot of weight I don't know if you guys have noticed but I've lost about seven pounds this year I'm almost back to my weight that I was uh, before the egg donation which is really exciting and I've been feeling really great like I just have a really my self-esteem is like skyrocketed because I just feel really good about myself because I know that I'm doing good things for my body and it's showing and I just, I don't know, it's given me self-confidence knowing that I can accomplish something when I go out to do it, which is going to run and not giving up. Another thing that's been really motivating is that I've been signing up for race after race after race after race. At least every month this summer I've ran a race, whether it be a 5K or an 8K, and that has given me something to work towards. Like I have a 5K coming up this weekend. I don't really know what it is, it's actually in another state, but it was a run that was coming up and it was affordable and I was like, I'm gonna sign up for this because this will motivate me to keep running this month. So being able to have something to look forward to and have something that you need to keep running towards uh, helps for me. If you're one of those people who don't care about money though and you're like, eh, I don't care, they can keep my $30, I'm not gonna run, then maybe that's not a good motivation point for you. But again, for somebody like me, it is very motivating because I'm like, okay, I have this thing that I have to do so I need to keep up with my running. The last thing that's been really motivating is having a good friend who wants to work out with you. Uh, my friend Brittany, you guys know I've been talking about her a lot in my vlogs. We run at least once a week. Uh, we tr I would like to run two to three times a week and I'd really try to keep to that schedule, but at the very minimum, she keeps me running at least once a week. We run together. Uh, we don't really talk when we run because I can't talk and run at the same time. We both listen to our music, but there's something motivating about knowing that somebody else is relying on you to exercise as well. You know, you're coming together, it's fun because you get to chat a little bit before you go or after, and then you're not by yourself. You kind of have somebody there pushing you along the way. And find something that motivates you. Those things have motivated me to keep going. Races, concentrating on all the benefits that have been happening since I started running, and then again, having just a supportive friend who wants to run with you and will get you off your butt at least a few times a week. So those would be my tips in regards to like getting over those hurdles you do also need a supportive partner if you're a mom um, you do need to have a supportive partner you know your wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever needs to be willing to you know support you in your running like John needed to be here with the kids while I went and ran for a half an hour to an hour like sometimes I'll do an hour run and I need somebody here with the kids so because he's supportive of what I'm doing it makes it a lot easier you know if you have to go through those extra strep steps of finding a babysitter or taking them to daycare you're not gonna you're gonna pit her out so a supportive uh, partner is really good for you know getting you going as well. You know, there's a lot of times where I'm really tired and like I said, I'll be like, I don't wanna run or I don't wanna do this. And sometimes I won't and you know, the next day I just, I don't, I don't feel bad about it. I used to feel really bad when I wouldn't work or stick 
work out or stick to something, but I realized that was making it even worse. Like it made me not want to work out at all because I was like, well, I don't want to keep feeling bad about myself. Um, so letting yourself have breaks is also a really good idea if you're starting a new workout regimen and not feeling like getting down on yourself. Just pick yourself back up and just say, that's okay, we didn't run yesterday, we'll run today, that kind of thing. Um, but again, the motivating friend is really helpful. Like when I'm just sitting on the couch, I'm like, oh, I'm tired. And then suddenly my friend calls me and is like, come on, let's go running. I'm like, all right, I'll go get my shoes and stuff and I'll get in the car and I'll come over. So moving on to helpful things that have been great for me. I talked a little bit about this stuff on my favorites video, but the first one is really good running shoes. I started off running, however, in some really old tennis shoes that I had um, from the last I'm going to run part of my life. Uh, but these have been really great for me. I really like them. These are the Nike Free Runs. I really need lightweight. Um, I think it's really important to get a shoe that matches your foot. These might not work for you. I have a neutral gait. I also have kind of, well, not kind of I have very flat feet so high arches hurt my feet after a while these are nice because they have a very little arch so it's not too bad but they're very lightweight and there's a lot of cushion I need lightweight that's the biggest thing I've tried super expensive running shoes and they just felt like boats and I just could not run I could not it threw off my gait so finding a really good pair of comfortable shoes is probably the most important thing when it comes to running they don't have to be expensive they just have to be comfortable and your feet need to not hurt while running so that would be the first thing that I would say is really nice for me if anything is bothering me if a shirt or bra feels too tight or if something's itching me or my shorts or my waistband are too tight to, and making me feel like I have to pee when I don't if anything is bothering me on my body or making me think about it that's just a downfall for my running I have to be completely and it sounds very high maintenance but that's just me I have to be completely just like comfortable when I start my run so finding really good comfortable clothing doesn't matter how cute it is but as long as it's comfortable and socks too um, and shoes that's super important which moves me on to my next thing if you like to carry your phone or your wallet or your driver's license or your car key or something like that finding something to carry that in which is lightweight is really good I really like this this is like a little mini fanny pack I talked about this in my favorites video as well it stretches I prefer these kind of clip fanny packs over the flip belts because the flip belts are I think too confining they're I don't like that I can't adjust them they're just you know one piece of fabric so I feel like there's a lot of pressure on my stomach which is very distracting I also don't like how you have to flip it to get everything in and out this thing's really nice because I just have to zipper it and then everything's fully adjustable on it I like to run with this big part on my back so it doesn't throw off kind of my weight dimension I hate the armbands because they cut off circulation here or fall and if they start sliding down my sweaty arm that's super distracting I just don't like them they also if I have any more like I said weight on one side versus the other it throws off my gait so this is really nice and then good headphones headphones are really important as well I have two pairs here I really enjoy these Beats by Dre they're in and around the ear these things are amazing. I got these for Christmas two years ago from my friend Sam. And these Power Beats are just, I really, really like them. They are horrible for audio for video though. Like if you're watching video with them, the audio does not match up with the visual. But for music, they're amazing. They're super comfortable. They're lightweight. Again, the comfortableness helps with the not distracting me. And then I have these uh, Jaybirds. I don't like the Jaybirds because they're just, they're not as comfortable in my ear. But I do work out with these sometimes and these are really good in regards to Bluetooth for video. They're awesome, which is why I have these for video and then these for my running but finding a good pair of earbuds or headphones those that really helps too if you like listening to music and then last but not least is a good playlist I like to use my Apple radio and I like to listen to either running play mixes or Kanye West album the Pablo album I really like that I know a lot of people don't like Kanye West and I don't really like him either but his music just gets me going for running like not necessarily his lyrics but like just the sound gets me really revved up to run. The Taylor Swift, which is funny that I should mention them in the same video, but the Taylor Swift uh, exercise album or her album that she likes on Apple Radio is really, really like good to run to for me. If you have knee issues or ankle issues or things like that, I talked about KT tape earlier this month, but I really do enjoy using KT tape. I have a lot of patella pain. I usually actually have to wear a knee brace, or I did when I was in high school doing sports, but I hated wearing that knee brace. It was so bulky, it slowed me down, it made running a lot more difficult and again running's already not fun so uh, why make it more difficult than it has to be so KT tape is really nice because it uh, supports my knee 
you know, takes away a lot of that pain and is just very lightweight and very flexible and doesn't slow me down when I run. I can hardly feel it. So look into KT tape if you have issues like that. In regards to things that I eat to kind of help me with my run, I don't think there's anything really specific that I try to eat necessarily as much as I try to not eat before I run. If I've eaten dinner for the evening, like I can't run after I eat dinner. Dinner is like the heaviest part of like the day and so if I eat really heavy, I can't run after. So my runs are usually before dinner or I put dinner off until way later if I can't run until a little bit later in the evening. Um, but I do like to have snacks like of like an hour to two hours before I run. Um, it takes your body a while to digest, so if you're still digesting food while you're running, it gets super uncomfortable. So in regards to like snacks that are really great for like pre-run, I really like toast with peanut butter. Um, peanut butter is a really good source of protein, which protein gives you energy, and then the carbohydrate of the bread or the toast helps with that. It's light enough that it doesn't weigh you down, and it just, you know, it's, it's good, it tastes good. So I like toast with peanut butter. I really like orange slices, like chilled orange slices. I don't know why I haven't eaten them since I was in elementary school, but they are amazing. <laughs> I've recently discovered how much I like those. So like if I run in the morning and I just need something in my tummy, I'll actually eat like an orange, like a cold orange. I'll slice it up and then eat it um, before I run because it gives me a good boost of energy. It's hydrating and it's not too heavy like I said. And then like, uh, like a protein bar every once in a while, I'll eat a protein bar. But I'm very careful with how many protein bars I eat because if I'm not working out and I eat a protein bar, it's just going to pack on the pounds which I don't want to do um, so yeah so I try to keep like light snacks before that's those I don't really do anything special though I don't like take any shakes or any supplements or things like that like to help my running um, I just try to not eat anything like heavy or junk foody before I go because I get really bad acid reflux now as I've gotten older for some reason that's something that I suffer from so I do oh I should say this I do like to take Tums like two Tums before I run it helps kind of calm down everything I've noticed even when I don't eat because of that constant just kind of up and down motion my stomach acid starts to rise and if I can take Tums before I run it just makes my run so much more comfortable even if I'm not feeling those things like if I take them as a preemptive thing oh they're amazing so if you have issues with like acid reflux I would highly suggest taking two Tums before you exercise or before you run um, they're also got a good source of calcium in there so that's good yeah I like to hydrate I don't like to drink a whole lot of water before I run because then I have that sloshing on my tummy so I try to drink water throughout the day and then run um, if I'm running first thing in the morning I'll take a few sips of water and then go run and then immediately drink a bunch of water after my run run is done but yeah I just I don't think I think people think too much into it when they think about starting running it doesn't have to be that difficult like I said just comfy clothes comfy shoes good music and just get out on the road increasing time and distance and all of that stuff the only person you're competing with is yourself so I think putting your pressure on you, yourself to get further and go faster you know it's a good thing in regards to like wanting to um, achieve those goals but at the same time it's kind of like you don't as long as you're just getting out there you know, it, it shouldn't matter. Those things shouldn't matter. And I think when people realize that, it makes it less intimidating to actually get out on the road and start running. I hope this was helpful. I feel like it was very confusing, but I don't really know. I'm not a running coach and I, you know, I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not, you know, I'm not any of those things. So I don't really know how to talk about this kind of stuff. But if you're like me, those are the things that helped me um, in my running. But the biggest thing was just getting off my butt and going. So. That's the biggest hurdle and I think once you can get past that, I think you're golden and just not giving up. You know, even if you have a bad run where you walk half the time, like it's okay, you know, don't give up because maybe something, maybe it was too hot outside, maybe you didn't get enough sleep the night before, maybe you were just in a bad mood and you didn't want to run any further, that's okay, but just don't let it set you back the next time. You know, I've had really terrible runs where I'm just like huffing and puffing and almost to the point of walking, you know, but then the next day I can go and suddenly it's a little bit cooler out or less humid or I'm in a better mood or I got more sleep and I'm like, holy cow, I could go six miles, seven miles, eight miles if I wanted to, you know. So um, don't let those things get you down. Don't let, you know, a bad day or not wanting to go run one day, you know, deter you from continuing. There's my uh, advice on running. There's how I kind of got over my running phobia and all of that. Uh, just kind of trial and error, you know, figuring out what breathing patterns work best for you, uh, figuring out your pace, like what, you know, what pace that you're comfortable at. Not somebody else, but you. Run, even if you're like snail's pace, like you might as well be walking. You know, if that's the pace you're comfortable at, stick with that pace. 
who really cares? Like I said, I have a 5K coming up this weekend, which I'm super excited about because again, it made me get off my butt yesterday to run with my friend. I was like, hey, I'm not gonna run. And then I realized, oh wait, I have a 5K this weekend. I gotta run. Um, and I'm hoping to sign up for a few more. You know, I'm gonna do like the turkey trot and like the jingle bell run, those types of things. Just things to get me through the year and keep me motivated to keep going. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Comment below if you've started running and what things help you run. Um, again, you don't have to be fancy. You know, all these things that I have, I do have more high tech stuff now. Like I have an Apple Watch for, to, you know, my heart rate. I have have really nice earbuds I have you know nice Nikes but I didn't have all of this when I started running you know these are things that I built up to because as I continued to run they were kind of that's another thing that was kind of motivating like okay if I can keep running for another month then I deserve to buy something new for my running kind of thing or if like I did with my workout clothing two years ago you know I bought you know one outfit or a few pairs of pants each time I met a milestone of okay I've been working out for six months now I deserve a fun new outfit that kind of thing so you know you don't have to start off with expensive stuff just get a pair of comfortable shoes clothes and just run get out there if you have somebody who wants to run with you great but again don't let them make you go faster than you feel like you can don't set yourself up for failure set yourself up for success start off slow and then get faster when you feel stronger you know that kind of thing there you have it there was my kind of running video I like I said if it was if it was helpful just let me know because I feel like I'm not making any sense whatsoever I will talk to you guys all in my next video thank you for watching as always and and I hope you have a great evening. Bye.